Hi, I'm Rich at New Life Scientific, and today I'm going to do a couple things with this Virtus freeze dryer. I'm going to actually show it off because it's actually for sale and we'd like to sell it to you. But I also want to address some things that I've had some people call in when we um, ship them out and they have a few questions specifically around the vacuum pumps. So I'm going to address that and also show off this nice uh, refurbished um, 35EL Virtus freeze dryer. And it is the older generation, you can see with the, the control panel here, but it works great. Um, you can see we're negative 84. Um, we're also pulling down to uh, 20 millitor right now. Um, and then uh, I think we put a brand new door on here, brand new door seal. And we've repainted the whole thing and we've went through the back end, re-insulated, verified the compressors and did all our testing and got it all working back to manufacturer specifications and uh, it's a nice running unit but over here you can see the vacuum pump um, on the right and then also the evacuator and the oil that comes with this and what we have here is our shop our shop vacuum evacuator oil evacuator and then also you can see here I put a, a dispenser on mine and to fill these up. But I'm actually going to do an oil change on this. And we're going to just show you what, what needs to be done to do an oil change while the machine can stay running. That way you don't have to shut the thing down and do an oil change. And that makes it really nice. But the first thing I'm going to point out too before we do the oil change is this right here. This is a power that actually powers a solenoid right here that actually allows this pump to do a ballast bypass. In other words, if this is unplugged, this will pull a deeper vacuum and it won't gurgle out excess moisture. If it is plugged in, and flip this up here, if we plug this in, you just heard it kick in. Now it's gurgling out moisture that possibly could bypass and it won't pull quite as deep of a vacuum when we do that but what happens is if you're evacuating a lot of fluids and i've had customers say well it's uh the oil mist eliminator it'll fill up and then it'll start steaming out but that's because you're gurgling and when you gurgle it actually picks up oil residue and it comes out if we just simply unplug it, you can see it's shut the valve and now it'll pull a deeper vacuum and it won't gurgle. And most people don't need it to do that. That's more so if you've got some um, really strong chemicals that you need to kind of come out of the system. But um, if you don't need that, just unplug it and leave it hang to the side. It's just an automatic um, you know, way to to try to keep from getting so much pollutants in the oil, I guess, if it really comes down to that. But anyways, we're gonna do an oil change. Now, all we're gonna do is up here on the vacuum, we're in a manual mode right now, so we can actually just shut the vacuum off. And there's a, a solenoid that'll actually separate the unit from the vacuum pump, and it'll actually shut down the vacuum pump too. So we push this, and now, the system in the back has shut down, the valve is shut, so it's no longer actually connected to the vacuum pump. So what you do is you just take your oil evacuator, just like we have with the system, you put, plug it in here, slide that on like that, and you just lift this little tab and open it. And you can see the oil just already coming out, and we're just gonna suck it on out here. <laughs> And at the same time, I'm going to open this up, get it ready to refill it. Very easy. And if you want to, you can also grab the back end and tip it up like this and pump it too. Then you get everything out of there. And depending how um, you know how much you want to wait, you can 
you know, let it all drain. But the oil's really nice and warm right now. We've been running it, so it makes it a lot easier to drain when it's nice and warm. So we've got the majority of the oil out, so we're just gonna shut that again there. And then, of course, I've got my handy dispenser pump, and then I keep a cap on here too. And then I'm just gonna pull this off, this little, um, so I can just stick that right in there. So we've evacuated the old oil, and now we're just gonna watch this, and we're gonna just pump in new oil. And then when it gets up to our marks, and you can see down here, it's still way down here yet, so we've pulled a lot of oil out of it when we evacuated it. Okay, we're coming up real quick now. So we slow down, and we're wanting to get it right in between the two marks there. And there we are. And now I'm just going to let the excess oil drain out of my hose there. You can kind of see how it just simply drains down like that. And just wait a bit there. And give this a couple more pumps too. And while that's kind of draining there, I'm just going to unplug this. And you can see it just kind of sucks it and then there's a nice little hole right here just to stick that down in there so if you do get a little oil residue in there um, no problem but you can see here I've done a lot of oil changes with our a lot of our vacuum pumps that we use for refrigeration evacuating and what we do when it gets full we have a barrel out in uh, the shop that we fill the barrels and if you don't have a barrel if you just need to get rid of this you can just take this whole thing right down to an auto parts store and say, hey, can you go dump this in your barrel for me? And, uh, and then just get rid of that oil for you that way. And then bring it back to your lab and be ready to go again on oil changes. So just a real quick, handy system um, to do oil changes. It's extremely important that you do them because you'll lose the integrity of your pumps and they won't last near as long. So we give you the gallon of oil. We do have some of these available too, so if you see this video and you can say, hey, Rich said, I'm gonna give you a dispenser pump and we're gonna give you a dispenser pump just like this one here. Um, if you call in and tell Josh, but you are getting the gallon of oil and you're getting the, and you're getting the evacuator. So you just put that back on and it's ready to go. So you can see we're, we just dropped, uh, or not dropped, but we rose up to 32 millitor because that shows you that there's no leaks in the vacuum system. It's just holding steadily right at 32. Now, when I turn this vacuum pump on, it's going to open up the valve and it's actually going to go higher yet because what happens is that vacuum pump hasn't had a chance to pull down the vacuum to get to that point. So because it's locked with our valve in the back from the vacuum pump, it is actually holding the vacuum right there. So watch when I hit the vacuum pump on. See how it jumped up to 62 and you're thinking, well, why did it do that? Because we have a section of hose and we have the vacuum pump that it had to catch up. So then it can now start pulling back down to where it's gonna get back down below 20 millitor again. So super easy during a run don't have to shut it down to shut the vacuum off come over here do an oil change and uh, keep a good scheduled maintenance um, oil change on there but now that we put new oil in it'll get to 20 and drop below it and um, but again i think that's uh, pretty much it uh, again i said uh, this is uh, rich at new life scientific if you got any questions give us a call thanks